The landowner's gin is spiked with ash from burned sorghum. All day the field blazed, a red tide. He woke in a sweat. Thatched roofs of the workers sprayed down with hoses steam. The tendrils of smoke citrine in the evening. His eye traces the silhouettes of bats spiraling around the mustard cloud as the narrow scream of insect wings purged from the burned nests rivals the crack of gas. The drink, he thinks, is good, and he stirs the ice with a nail. He puts a match to a cigarette and, squinting, aims the ruby tip on the shadowed heads of the laborers. Hot wind. But the ginkgo is still, and the man absently slaps a mosquito on his ankle. Blood is in the creases between his index finger and his thumb. Two planes are on fire, his hand smear and the field lit like a marquee. High beyond it all, an escarpment holds its vigil. <coughs> Low moon, soar with the fusion of smoke and sky, is halved by the rise. The young sleep in their houses in mortal danger. The frantic bats glide in the dry currents, blind and furious. They are the angels for those of us who are unspeakable. The, the speaker in this poem is Echo from uh, Echo and Narcissus. So uh, keep that in mind. When I was writing this new book, she was very much the muse uh, for the book. Um, mostly because I loved the, uh, the story between the two of them. It seemed to me the quintessential love story. Uh, everybody dies at the end, which is, which is nice. <laughs> Buy the book now, then? <laughs> okay. And what part of his reflection will tell me who I am? That I am standing a little away, wanting in on his story. Days I am cup, slice, gray, need therapy. The headache of the repetition of his voice, telling himself some story. I am in the city looking for him forcibly drawn to the square glass eyes. A light is on in the hundredth story. The street black as an eel. The look of him inside its puddle. I play lamppost to the dark of this story. The one who sets fire to half the state while setting fire to love letters in the forest. Let her be part of this story. I am myself in lace, rubber things, oil on every bit of my body. He loves only his mirror story. A pistol, a knife, plastic tubing, plastic trash bags, spray gun, a wig, a brick of cash. These are the start of a story. The one who wrote the letters to begin with his love like violets in her hand. Let him be in the story. Later, the weasels and the otters coming to the stream to pull up the roots, husk like onions, eating his story. Staring into his winter face, lips blue as Krishna because of his winter face. No one ever got this piece of the story. I get to be the woods, quiet under the tongue-tied lightning, the ever-responding thunder, bleak with story. How did we get here? My father sprawled on the bed, sleeping, dried remnants of his retching on the side of his mouth. I take off his shirt, pants, socks, my father, a pink newborn with every clothing shed, calm as a napping infant. I wipe his face with a damp towel, banishing the offending stain, traveling over the slopes of his eyes, my eyes, the hills of his nose, my sister's, and the thinning hayfield of his head. 
In the sky, the equatorial moon, the largest, brightest moon, bears witness, its light streaming through the window like angels' dresses. It is a satellite. I learned that in school last week. This non-light weaver, a massive rock of a reflector, harnesses light from the sun. Should I give up on the moon? I curl up next to my father. I am a seahorse, a nautilus. I am the ear's cochlea, and again, wait for sleep. Earlier, the neighbors down the block slaughtered a goat. The killing commemorated the first birthday of the household's youngest son. The preparations spilling over to festivities, which boiled over like a witch's cauldron onto the street. At dusk, strings of electric lights appeared overhead like fireflies, illuminating the women fanning themselves and the throng of crimson-faced men, my father among them, gathered around a long table, gambling and drinking, the air filled with their boisterous joy. Young boys circled hungrily, sons and brothers, remorse wishing themselves into sharks or ships. It was a lucrative venture, the grown-ups loose with their pesos when they asked the boys to make storons for cigarettes, matches, salted cashews. And the men raged with their merriment into the deepening night as the boys, one by one, fell to their lupine slumber. Sometime after midnight, I, awaken, I was awakened by my mother, rocking my shoulder. Please fetch your father, she said, and I walked the empty street leading to him, my singing argumentative father. I tugged at his shirt, mumbled my coaxing. He shooed me away like a fly, lifted me by my underarms, and stood me on the corner, promising he would go home with me after one last drink. Nearby, the goat skull, picked clean, wan as the moon, dangled from a tall fence post, dogs curled underneath it. Standing up, I drifted in and out of sleep. This was only the beginning. Sometimes my mother will be with me, sometimes I will go at it alone, and when my brother is older, he will accompany me as he will when I buy warm bread in the morning. When we, when we walked home that first night, my father slung his arm around the wingspan of my back, and I felt his weight on me, dented by the gravity of his intoxication, his vulnerability, his loneliness, as we wobbled down the road. In the darkness, I heard the songs of night birds, cricket, frogs, stray cats and dogs, my song. <laughs>